There are times in life when everything feels stagnant, when it seems like no matter how much effort you put in or how many prayers you lift up, nothing seems to be changing. You've been waiting, seeking, and trusting God, yet the doors remain closed and the path ahead feels unclear. It's easy to wonder if this is where your story ends, but let me remind you of something powerful today. God is not finished with you. Right now, he's turning the page to a new chapter in your life. What may feel like a delay is actually divine preparation for what's to come. The God who knows every detail of your story is about to write something new, something greater than you've imagined. The struggles, the waiting, the confusion, none of it is wasted. God is using it all to position you for the next season of purpose, breakthrough, and blessing. In this moment, God is preparing to open new doors and lead you into a fresh season of favor. He's aligning the right people, opportunities, and circumstances to bring his perfect plan to pass. So don't give up now. Something new is on the horizon. Stay with me, because in this video, we're going to dive deep into how God turns the pages of our lives and brings us into new seasons of growth and transformation. By the end, I'll pray a powerful prayer over you, declaring that God's new chapter will unfold in your life with clarity, purpose, and blessing. If you're ready to step into this new chapter, hit the like button and type, I trust God's plan in the comments below. Together, we'll believe that God is about to lead you into something extraordinary. First and foremost, let's take a moment to reflect on the unexpected twists and turns in life. It's easy to move on from things that feel broken, toxic, or harmful. We understand when God closes those doors. They were never meant to be part of our story for long. But what about the times when he asks us to walk away from something that feels good, steady, and fulfilling? That's when faith is truly tested, and trust becomes more than just a word. It becomes a lifeline. Think about Peter for a moment, standing by the shores of Galilee, his boat full of fish after a miraculous catch. He wasn't in a place of failure. He was thriving in his work, his livelihood secure. Yet Jesus called him to leave it all behind, his boat, his nets, and even that moment of success to follow him into the unknown. Imagine the weight of that decision, to step away from everything familiar, everything reliable, to embrace something uncertain but greater. That's what it means when God begins to turn the page in your life. You may find yourself in a similar moment. Perhaps your career is flourishing, your relationships are thriving, or your ministry feels fruitful. Yet deep down, there's a stirring you can't ignore, a sense that something new is on the horizon. It's not dissatisfaction, it's a holy discontent, a gentle nudge from the spirit that whispers, there's more. It feels illogical, maybe even reckless, to consider walking away from what is good. But God never calls you to abandon good without leading you to something extraordinary. Sometimes holding on to the good enough is what prevents us from stepping into God's best. It's like clutching a handful of pebbles while God is waiting to place a diamond in your palm. The letting go feels risky, even painful, because we naturally fear the unknown. But remember, God sees the entire picture while we see only a fragment. What feels like a loss is often the first step toward abundance. This process often begins with a sense of restlessness. The things that once brought you joy may start to feel incomplete. You may find yourself questioning your purpose, even in areas where you've previously felt secure. It's as if God is loosening your grip on the familiar, preparing your heart for something new. This isn't punishment, it's preparation. He's stretching your faith, enlarging your capacity to trust Him, and aligning your heart with His divine plans. In these moments, the question isn't, why would God take this away? But rather, what is God making room for? Just as a gardener prunes healthy branches to encourage greater growth, God sometimes asks us to release what's good so that we can bear even more fruit. It's a painful but necessary process, one that ultimately leads to greater joy, deeper fulfillment, and a closer walk with Him. If you feel this stirring in your life, don't resist it out of fear. 
Instead, lean into God's promises. Remember His faithfulness in past seasons and trust that He is the same God now. He's not asking you to step away from good things to leave you empty-handed. He's inviting you into a deeper adventure, one that requires faith but promises rewards beyond what you can imagine. Next, God allows you to feel the pain of outgrowing your environment. And while it may feel disorienting, it is a sacred sign of transformation. Think of the butterfly. For it to emerge in beauty, it must first endure the cramped and confining cocoon. What was once a place of safety and growth becomes restrictive. The butterfly doesn't stay because it can't. It has outgrown it. In the same way, God will allow a sense of discomfort to grow within you not to harm you, but to prepare you for the next stage of your journey. Perhaps you've noticed it already. The places where you once felt alive now feel lifeless. The relationships that once brought you joy now seem strained. The roles you used to fill with ease now feel heavy and unfulfilling. It's not because you failed or because you're ungrateful. It's because you're being called to something greater. This friction, though uncomfortable, is purposeful. It's God whispering, you were made for more than this. Consider Joseph in the Bible. He had grand dreams of leadership, dreams given to him by God, but his reality couldn't have been further from that vision. His brother's jealousy drove them to throw him into a pit, a literal and emotional low point. Yet even in that dark, lonely place, God was at work. Joseph's pit wasn't the end. It was the beginning of a journey that would ultimately lead to the fulfillment of his dreams. What felt like rejection was God's redirection. The same can be true for you. The discomfort you feel in your current circumstances is not a sign of failure, but a signal of growth. Like a bird in a nest that suddenly feels too small, you are being nudged to spread your wings. You may feel the tension of leaving behind the familiar, but this is necessary for you to rise to what God has prepared for you. Trust that the discomfort has a divine purpose. It's a signal that you are ready to step into a larger, more expansive space. Sometimes the process feels isolating. You may wonder why you no longer fit in with the people or environments that once felt like home. It can feel like losing a part of yourself, but the truth is, you're shedding what no longer serves you. Like a tree shedding old leaves, you're making room for new growth. God is pruning away what is holding you back so you can bear more fruit in the season to come. And while this season of outgrowing can feel like a wilderness, it is not one you walk through alone. God is with you every step, gently guiding you toward the new chapter He is writing for your life. Lean into Him, trust the process, embrace the pain, knowing it is the labor of new birth. Just as the butterfly must struggle to break free from the cocoon to strengthen its wings, you, too, are being strengthened in this time of transition. Take heart. God's plans for you are not small or stagnant. The discomfort you feel is a divine invitation to step into a bigger story, one filled with His purpose, His glory, and His love. You are not being punished, you are being prepared for something extraordinary. Trust Him in the stretching, in the breaking, and in the growth. Your outgrowing is the evidence that God is at work in you, preparing you for the abundant life He has promised. Moreover, you notice God closing doors you were certain were wide open. It's more than a simple, no. It's an undeniable, not now, or even a firm, not ever, on something you had envisioned as part of your future. Perhaps it feels abrupt, unexpected, like a rug being pulled from beneath your feet. But God's ways are higher than ours, and these closed doors, though painful in the moment, are acts of divine love and protection. Think of Paul and Silas in Acts 16. They were men on fire for God, ready to spread the gospel in Asia. Their mission was noble, their intentions pure. Yet the Holy Spirit didn't just nudge them toward a detour, He outright forbade them from entering. Can you imagine the confusion they must have felt? They likely questioned, Why, Lord, isn't this your work? Aren't we walking in obedience? But God wasn't rejecting their efforts. He was redirecting them to something greater, an open door in Macedonia that would set the stage for a powerful move of His Spirit. This principle holds true in your life too. 
When a door slams shut on a dream, a relationship, a career path, or a long-held plan, it's not a sign of God abandoning you. It's evidence of His sovereignty over your story. He sees what you cannot. Perhaps that job offer you lost was steering you into a season of growth elsewhere. Maybe the relationship that ended was keeping you from a union that would align with God's best for you. Or the opportunity that dissolved before your eyes. It might have been a mirage in the desert, a distraction from the true oasis God is leading you toward. Closed doors can feel like rejection, but they are actually divine redirections. Imagine walking through a forest. You see a pathway that looks clear and inviting, but just as you step forward, a guide blocks the entrance. Frustrated, you might think, why, I can walk this way? But the guide knows what you don't. The trail is riddled with hidden dangers, loose rocks, steep cliffs, perhaps even predators. The blocked path isn't cruelty, it's care. So it is with God. Each door he closes is like a heavenly guardrail, protecting you from what could derail your purpose. It may not make sense now, and it may hurt. But trust that God is redirecting you with the precision of a skilled potter shaping clay. You are being molded, refined, prepared for something far better than you could ask or imagine. In the midst of these closed doors, your faith will be tested. It's easy to trust when the doors swing open, when opportunities flow seamlessly, and when life feels full of yeses. But can you trust Him when the answer is no? Can you surrender your plans to His perfect will, even when it feels like your dreams are crumbling? This is where the beauty of faith comes alive. It's in these moments of seeming loss that God whispers, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. Hold on to this promise, even when the path ahead is unclear. Trust that the hand closing the door is the same hand that holds your future. Furthermore, there may come a time in your journey when the people who once understood you so well suddenly seem distant, puzzled, or even critical of the changes they see in you. It feels as if they are looking at you through a foggy window, unable to see the clarity of the work God is doing within your heart. This experience can be disorienting, even painful, as it often involves those closest to you, friends, mentors, family members, who have shared in your laughter, tears, and dreams. Yet this shift is not a reflection of failure or rejection. It is often a divine signal that God is turning the page in your life, moving you toward a new chapter of purpose and growth. Picture a caterpillar, nestled comfortably among the leaves, surrounded by other caterpillars who understand its life, its struggles, and its routines. When that caterpillar begins its transformation into a butterfly, it must leave behind the familiar and enter a time of solitude. In the same way, as God begins to elevate your thinking and expand your vision, you may find yourself outgrowing spaces and relationships that were once your comfort zone. It's not that these people have failed you, nor have you failed them, but the version of you they knew no longer aligns with where God is leading you. Even Jesus, our ultimate example, faced this challenge. In his hometown of Nazareth, those who knew him as a carpenter, the son of Mary, could not reconcile that image with his role as the savior of the world. They questioned him, doubted him, and even dismissed him. Isn't this the carpenter? They asked. Their inability to see beyond his earthly identity didn't diminish his divine mission, but it revealed a truth we must also face. Not everyone will accompany us into the fullness of our calling. This transition often manifests subtly at first. Conversations that once flowed freely may now feel stilted or forced. People who once celebrated your victories may begin to question your motives or dismiss your aspirations. You might hear phrases like, you've changed, spoken not as a compliment, but as a veiled critique. While these moments can sting, they are not meant to discourage you, but to refine your trust in God's plan. God's elevation often requires separation. Just as Abraham had to leave his homeland to follow God's promise, you too may need to step away from familiar relationships or environments to embrace what lies ahead. This is not abandonment, but alignment. 
God is aligning you with people, opportunities, and spaces that will nurture your growth and support your purpose. Imagine a gardener pruning a rose bush, cutting away branches that seem healthy, but hinder the plant's ability to bloom fully. The pruning process can look harsh, even unnecessary, but it is driven by the gardener's vision for the rose's beauty. In the same way, God's separations in your life are not acts of rejection, but preparation. He sees the full picture, the new chapter waiting for you, and He is clearing the path for its arrival. During this time, lean into God's presence. Let Him be your anchor when relationships feel shaky or when others misunderstand your journey. Remember that your worth and direction come from Him, not from the opinions of others. He is the author of your story, and though some chapters may close, the pages ahead are filled with His promises, His plans, and His purpose for you. Additionally, there are seasons in life when you may feel like everything is slowing down, like the momentum you once had has suddenly come to a halt. Plans that seemed so certain now feel suspended, and opportunities you anticipated are nowhere in sight. It can feel disheartening, even confusing, as though the progress you worked so hard for has been reversed. Yet, this pause, as unsettling as it may seem, is not a setback, but a divine strategy, a purposeful pause orchestrated by God Himself. Imagine a master artist stepping back from their canvas, not because they are unsure of what to do next, but because they see the bigger picture and know the details must align perfectly. In much the same way, God's pause is not a sign of abandonment. It's a deliberate act of preparation. It's His way of ensuring that when the next chapter unfolds, you will be ready, not just for the blessings, but for the responsibilities and the purpose that come with them. Think about David, the shepherd boy anointed to be king. In the moment of his anointing, the heavens declared his destiny. But instead of ascending immediately to the throne, David found himself back in the pasture, tending sheep. To an outsider, it might have seemed like God had changed his mind or forgotten his promise. But David's return to the pasture was not a detour, it was a training ground. It was there, in the solitude and stillness, that he learned to lead, protect, and trust God deeply. Those fields were where he cultivated the heart of a king long before he wore the crown. In your own life, the divine pause may look like plans falling through, doors not opening as you hoped, or a season of waiting that feels endless. But what if this time is not meant to hold you back, but to strengthen your foundation? Consider how a tree's roots grow deepest in stillness. The seasons when nothing seems to be happening above the surface are often when the most significant growth is taking place beneath it. God is fortifying your character, sharpening your skills, and deepening your faith so that when the weight of your calling rests on your shoulders, you will not only carry it, you will thrive under it. This pause invites you to reflect, to draw closer to Him, and to let go of the need to control the timeline. Like a potter shaping clay, God is molding you in this moment, applying pressure here, softening there, and creating a vessel ready to hold His blessings. It may not feel comfortable, but it is necessary. Embrace this stillness, not as a punishment, but as an opportunity, a sacred space where God is at work in ways you cannot yet see. As you navigate this season, lean into trust. Remind yourself that the same God who anointed you for your purpose is the one preparing you for it. His plans are never hurried, but always perfect. What feels like a step backward is often His way of positioning you for something far greater than you could imagine. Allow this pause to remind you that God is not just interested in what you will do for Him, but in who you are becoming in Him. It's also worth noting that God often stirs our hearts toward the extraordinary, leading us down paths that defy logic or comfort. These are the moments when the familiar fades, and you find yourself inexplicably drawn to something that seems completely unreasonable. It's as if your spirit is quietly nudging you toward a horizon you've never considered. This is the nature of God's call. It is rarely predictable, and it often feels impractical to our human understanding. Think about Noah. He was a man living in a world that had never seen rain, let alone a flood. 
Yet God asked him to build an ark, a massive vessel designed to float on waters that didn't yet exist. Can you imagine the ridicule he must have faced, the questions that must have swirled in his mind? And yet, Noah trusted that the unreasonable instruction held a divine purpose, even if he couldn't fully grasp it. That trust allowed him to walk forward, plank by plank, nail by nail, until the ark was complete. What seemed foolish to others became the vehicle of salvation. This is what happens when God stirs your heart toward an unfamiliar path. You may feel a pull to step out of the security of your current life, maybe to start a ministry you've never envisioned, write a book despite your doubts, or move to a place you've never been. These desires often feel strange and unsettling at first, as though you're standing on the edge of an uncharted ocean, unsure of what lies ahead. But isn't that where faith shines brightest? When we take a step, not because we see the entire road, but because we trust the one who does? God calls us to the unreasonable because it's there that his miracles unfold. He knows that when you step into the unknown, you become utterly reliant on him. It's not about your strength, your resources, or your understanding. It's about his power working through your obedience. The unreasonable path strips away our illusions of control and reminds us that we serve a God who makes streams in the desert and calls light out of darkness. You might feel unqualified, unsure, or even foolish for considering such a path. But remember, God doesn't choose the equipped. He equips the chosen. He doesn't ask for your perfection, only your willingness. Like a potter shaping clay, he takes the raw material of your faith and molds it into something extraordinary. Your job is not to understand every detail, but to take the next step, however small it might seem. These unfamiliar and unreasonable paths often carry seeds of transformation, not just for you, but for those around you. Your obedience might inspire someone else to trust God in their own journey. Your courage could plant hope in someone else's heart and your willingness to say yes could ripple outward in ways you can't even begin to imagine. So when you feel that pull towards something that doesn't quite make sense, lean into it. Let it stretch you, challenge you, and awaken a deeper trust in God's plans. You may not understand it now, but as you step out in faith, you'll discover that God is already there, waiting to meet you with His provision, His guidance, and His boundless love. We should also remember that God often speaks to us in whispers, gentle nudges that prod us toward obedience, even when it feels uncomfortable. These divine nudges are not random. They are intentional, precise, and deeply rooted in His perfect plan for our lives. Like the story of Jonah, who was called to Nineveh against every fiber of his personal desire, God's call can sometimes feel inconvenient or even overwhelming. But it is precisely in these moments of discomfort that the seeds of transformation are sown. Think about the last time you felt a tug in your heart to do something that didn't make sense at the time. Perhaps it was the urge to reach out to someone who wronged you, to offer forgiveness when resentment felt more justified. Maybe it was a quiet prompting to give something valuable, a resource, time, or energy to someone in need, even when it seemed like you didn't have enough to spare. These moments may feel like interruptions, but in truth, they are divine appointments. God's nudges often push us into spaces that stretch us because growth rarely happens in comfort zones. It's like clay on the potter's wheel. It has to be pressed, shaped, and refined under the potter's skilled hands. These nudges are his way of saying, trust me, even when it doesn't feel easy. Obedience in these moments is less about logic and more about faith a declaration that you believe in His plans, even when you can't see the full picture. When you lean into these nudges, you unlock the doorway to something greater. Forgiving that person may not change the past, but it liberates your heart and aligns it with God's peace. Giving generously, even when it costs you, cultivates trust in God's provision. Stepping into a role you feel unqualified for forces you to rely on His strength, not your own. Each act of obedience, no matter how small, is a thread in the tapestry of your breakthrough, woven with grace and purpose. It's tempting to resist, isn't it? Our minds race with questions. What if I fail? What if this hurts too much? What if I'm not enough? But remember, God doesn't call the equipped, He equips the called. 
like Peter stepping out of the boat onto the waves. We're not meant to fix our eyes on the uncertainty of the task, but on the certainty of the one who calls us. His grace is sufficient, his timing is perfect, and his love is unfailing. Obedience is not about perfection, it's about surrender. It's about saying, yes, Lord, even when your knees are trembling. It's about trusting that every step you take in faith is a step closer to his purpose for you. These nudges are not interruptions to your life. They are invitations to a deeper walk with him. They are his way of turning the page to a new chapter, one where his glory shines through your willingness to follow, even when it's hard. Lastly, you begin to develop an unshakable awareness of God's presence, a sense so deep and profound that it shifts the very foundation of your life. This is not a fleeting feeling or an occasional stirring. It is a persistent, undeniable reality. It's as if the veil between heaven and earth has thinned, allowing you to experience God in a way you never have before. His presence becomes more than a comforting thought. It becomes the anchor for your soul, holding you steady through every wave of uncertainty. Like Moses standing before the burning bush, you may find yourself in moments where the world seems to pause and all you can sense is the weight of His glory. Perhaps it happens during worship, when tears stream down your face, unbidden and uncontrollable, as the love of God wraps around you like a warm embrace. Or maybe it's in the quiet of your home, where the simple act of prayer feels like stepping into holy ground, the sacred space where your spirit communes directly with the Creator. Sometimes this awareness doesn't come with dramatic signs, but rather with a quiet, steady reassurance. In the middle of chaos, when life feels like a storm raging around you, an inexplicable peace takes hold of your heart. It's the kind of peace that doesn't make sense, that defies logic, that whispers, I am with you, even as the winds howl and the waves rise. This peace becomes your evidence, your confirmation, that God is leading you through this transition. You may find that His voice becomes clearer, not necessarily audible, but unmistakable. It might be a scripture that comes to mind at the exact moment you need it, or a gentle prompting in your heart that feels undeniably divine. These moments remind you that you are not wandering aimlessly. You are being guided, step by step, by the one who sees the end from the beginning. This awareness transforms how you see the world. What once felt ordinary now feels sacred. A sunrise, a kind word, even the stillness of the night, everything becomes a reminder of His nearness. Your perspective shifts, and with it your faith deepens. Doubts may still arise, but they no longer shake you because you have tasted and seen the goodness of God. You know He is with you, and that knowledge sustains you. This is more than a feeling, it's a relationship, a communion, an invitation to walk closely with the one who is orchestrating your story. Let's us pray. Heavenly Father, I come before you today, humbled and broken, yet filled with hope, because I know you are the author of my story. You hold the pen in your mighty hand, and you are turning the page to a new chapter in my life. Lord, I stand in awe of your goodness and sovereignty, knowing that your plans for me are greater than I can imagine, plans to prosper me and not to harm me, to give me a future and a hope. Father, I lay my life before you. You see every part of me, the good, the bad, and the broken. I confess my sins and shortcomings, Lord. Forgive me for the times I strayed from your path, for the moments of doubt and fear, for the pride, the anger, the impatience, and all the ways I've fallen short of your glory. Wash me clean, Lord, and make me new. Purify my heart and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Help me to walk in the righteousness that only comes through your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, you know the struggles I have faced, the burdens I carry, the heartaches that weigh me down, and the failures that haunt me. I bring them all to you now, for you are my refuge and strength, my ever-present help in times of trouble. I have tried to carry these burdens on my own, and I am weary, Lord. I surrender them to you. Take my pain, my doubts, my fears, and my failures, and exchange them for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Father, I am ready for a new chapter. I am ready for you to do a new thing in my life. 
Close the doors that need to be closed, Lord, and open the ones that align with your will for me. Help me to let go of the past, the mistakes, the disappointments, and the things that no longer serve your purpose for my life. Teach me to trust in your timing, for you make all things beautiful in your time. As you turn the page, Lord, I ask for clarity and wisdom. Guide my steps and order my path. Let your word be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Fill me with courage to step into the unknown, knowing that you go before me. Help me to walk by faith and not by sight, trusting that you are working all things together for my good. Lord, I pray for healing in every area of my life, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Heal the wounds of my past and give me the strength to forgive those who have hurt me as you have forgiven me. Break every chain of fear, doubt, and insecurity that holds me back. I declare that I am free in Jesus' name, free to step into the destiny you have prepared for me. Father, I ask for your favor and blessings over this new chapter. Pour out your provision, your protection, and your peace. Surround me with your love and let your presence go with me wherever I go. Fill my heart with hope, my mind with wisdom, and my spirit with joy. Let this new season be one of growth, transformation, and fulfillment of your promises. Lord, I thank you for the lessons of the past, even the painful ones, for I know they have shaped me and drawn me closer to you. I thank you for the strength you have given me to endure and the grace that has carried me through. And now, I thank you in advance for the blessings and opportunities that lie ahead. I trust you, Lord, with every detail of my life. May this new chapter be one that glorifies you, Lord. Let my life be a testimony of your faithfulness and goodness. Use me to be a light in the world, to share your love with others, and to bring glory to your name. Let your will be done in my life, and let your kingdom come through me. I surrender all to you, Lord, my past, my present, and my future. Write my story according to your perfect plan, and may it reflect your love, grace, and power. I place my hope and trust in you, for you are the God who makes all things new. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. If this message resonates with you today, type Amen in the comments below. I declare that God is turning the page to a new chapter in your life. What seemed like a season of waiting or uncertainty is about to shift and you are stepping into a fresh beginning filled with purpose, joy, and divine direction. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every door that was closed is being unlocked, and God is aligning your steps with His perfect will for your life. Share this word with someone who needs to be reminded that God is not finished with them yet. As you share, you're planting seeds of hope and faith, allowing God to move in ways beyond what you can imagine. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more powerful messages that will uplift your spirit and help you walk confidently in God's plan for your life. Remember, God is the author of your story and He is faithful to complete the good work He began in you. He sees every prayer, every tear, and every hope you've held on to. Trust in His timing because He is making all things new. If you have a prayer request, leave it in the comments below. We would be honored to stand in agreement with you and believe for God's supernatural intervention. May the peace that surpasses all understanding fill your heart as you step into this new chapter. Trust that God is working behind the scenes and His blessings are on the way. Keep your eyes fixed on Him for His promises never fail and His love for you is eternal.